So number two on the review, we're given that tangent of theta is five sixths. And then it says that theta is bounded by these angles and the goal is the sine of two theta. So I would begin with deciding which quadrant to go to right here. So recall that this is like zero, 90, 180, and 270. So if we're between 180 and 270, then we're gonna operate down here. That's where we are. Now they tell us that tangent of theta is five sixths, where tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so from this position here, from that position there, our opposite would be five and our adjacent would be six. However, they're both negative because you're going to the left and then you're going down. So double negative, which is why it shows here as positive because the double negatives divided would just reduce to a positive. So Pythagorean theorem right there, that'll give you the square root of 61. Right, the Pythagorean theorem, if you do all that, 61 square rooted, that'll give you C. Yeah, 25 plus 36, 61. Okay, so we have the hypotenuse. I think now we can proceed on to the goal, right? The goal is the sine of two theta. So by our cheat sheets, by our trig IDs, we know that sine of two theta is two, times sine times cosine. So a timeout, let, let's find here in green, let's find, let's find the sine of theta. What does the sine of theta equal? So let's rely on our triangle. And here, what would be sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be opposite over hypotenuse. So we have negative five over square root 61. What about cosine? Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's negative six over square root 61. So time out over, let's resume play. So this is two times sine times cosine like that. We don't need a calculator for this one because let's see, put a one under the two, multiply all the top numbers. That'll give you positive 60. Multiply all the bottom numbers. It gives you a regular 61, which is why this is the final answer for number two from the review. Now let's try number seven, part A, as requested. So let's see, seven A. So for that one, we have this triangle. They call this ACB. This is 29, this is 32, this is 35. And the goal is B, that's the goal right there. Angle B is the goal. So when I have three sides, we can use law of cosines. So use law of cosines that features capital B. And if you do that, here would be your setup. It'll look like 29 squared equals 32 squared plus 35 squared minus 2 times 32 times 35 times the cosine of B, which I happen to call X, but doesn't really matter. The, the, goal, the goal is to find angle B. That's the goal. Call it X, call it whatever you want. That's the goal. Let's see. So 29 squared, get your calculators out. 29 squared, so that's 841 equals 32 squared is 1024. 
35 squared is 1225 minus let look let's go two times 32 times 35 and that's 2240 times the cosine of b why don't we add those two numbers together so and let's go up here now so we have 841 we have 841 equals 1024 plus 1225 these two together that's 2249 minus 2240 times the cosine of b and then why don't we subtract 2249 to the other side okay let's subtract it to the other side and that's negative 1408 equals negative 2240 times the cosine of v in case you're wondering how come we didn't just go this minus that you cannot subtract those numbers no 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 because this is being multiplied by cosine b and according to pemdas multiplication stronger than subtraction so you cannot subtract these numbers okay that's why we move this to this side so currently we are right here in blue and now we can divide both sides by negative 2240 negative 2240 and so these cancel so we have cosine b equals 1408 over 2240 the negatives could knock out the composite and now to get B alone, you have to go cosine inverse both sides. So B is going to equal cosine inverse of 1408 over 2240. I have my calculator here. Cosine inverse of that. I mean, check the answer key, but it should be about 51 degrees. So this is about 51 degrees. That was the goal. So that's our final answer, about 51 degrees for problem seven, part A. Now let's look at number eight, part B. So let's move on uh, to 8B, shall we? 8B, Let, let's get this here. Here we go. So 8B. And for that one, we have, uh, we have, a right triangle, check it out like that, like that, like that. We got 12 and we got 30 degrees. Let me make the pencil a little less broad. There we go, a little better. Okay, let's see. I would probably, we could approach this so many different ways. We could use 30, 60, 90. We can use Sokotoa. Um, why don't we just use Sokotoa? You could use law of signs, okay? A lot of different techniques. How about we just use Sokotoa? Why don't we use cosine? Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine, theta is going to be 30. The adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is 12. Uh, multiply both sides by 12. Cancel. Right, that's a 12 there. These are gone. And then go calculator on 12 cosine 30. And we get x equals 6 square root 3. So this is 6 square root 3. And why don't you then go Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side? So we have 6 square root 3. We have 6 square root 3. Let's go Pythagorean theorem to find x right there. So x squared plus the other leg squared equals 12 squared. So x squared plus on the calculator, that's 36 times 3, which is 108, 144. And uh, I believe that's going to give you x squared equals 36. So the missing leg Uh, should be six, right? That, that's what the math is telling us, that this is six. And that makes sense, because if this is 60 degrees, these are the relationships of the 30, 60, 90. So anyways, let's finish this problem. The area is one half base times height. 
one half base times height. Uh, type this in, do it by hand. However, you want the exact value. Six times six is 36, but take half of 36, 18, and just keep the square root three attached. That's how the answer, uh, that's how the answer is obtained, right? 18 square root three. And then finally, uh, part C of that same exercise, let's give that a go. 8C, we have an equilateral triangle. Look, they say that's 60, that's 60. And they say that this is eight. Look, 60, 60, this also has to be 60 because if you add them all up, it's got to be 180, so which, which is why the missing one's also 60. So if a triangle is equiangular, it's also equilateral. So all these are eights, which means we have an equilateral triangle. And recall the special formula uh, fr from a video not too long ago. This area formula only belongs or only applies to the equilateral triangle, which is what we have. S is the side length, in this case, eight. So our area would be square root three over four times eight squared. So this is square root three over four times, well, eight squared is 64. Let me put it one underneath it. Four goes up into 64 16 times which is why the answer is this number right here.